praise God. Uh, let us begin with a word of prayer. Our dear everlasting Father, we want to thank you for this blessed moment where we are able to worship you, even meditating upon your living word. I want to pray that the Holy Spirit will work within our lives and may work of darkness for you to crumble even in the lives of all who are going to hear this word. Thank you, everlasting Father, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The message is reviving our spiritual steps. And the Bible verse is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verses 1 to verse 3. And this is what it says. While Jeremiah was still confined in the courtyard of the God, the word of the Lord came to him a second time. This is what the Lord says. He who made the earth, the Lord who formed it and established it, the Lord is his name. Call to me and I'll answer you, and I'll tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. At a time like this, people are talking about so many things. We are hearing so many things in the media, and we can be deceived to fall into unbelief. It's also a time like this where people have all sorts of prayer topics. They are expecting answers concerning their economy, answers concerning their health, answers concerning the education of their children, many other things people are trying to receive answers. But I want to say this, more important than answers, it is your spiritual step, my spiritual step, praise the Lord. Amen. And to prove this, or to emphasize on this matter, when the Israelites were going around the walls of Jericho, the Lord instructed them, as you walk around the walls of Jericho, walk in silence. Move around in silence. Why? He was trying to, he was telling them that they should not speak unbelief. You know, when people are walking, imagine if they were walking around and discussing about the matter. Asking, we until now we don't see even a crack. Huh? How how long? Huh? Will this really give us victory? This really will have spread terribly. You know what? This belief is contentious. Just like you're hearing of a global pandemic that is infecting people, more and more people each and every day. This belief is contentious person. And we have to break and resist every element of unbelief that comes our way. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And we need to come up together in prayer. Why? Because unity in prayer is very, very important. Oneness of believers who are the covenant is very important. When the Israelites came together as one and applied the blood of the Lamb on their door Miracles of Exodus took place. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in oneness, covenant oneness, also God was miracles. And he protected them from burning. Yeah? When they were thrown into a furnace of fire, the fire did not consume them. So covenant people coming together in oneness, it brings miracles. Hallelujah. Their prayer is powerful and it is, it's very, very effective. Hallelujah. Remember when the first century church gathered in Maxapron? And in that Maxapron, they joined constantly in prayer. As we read Acts chapter 1, verse 14, God gave them irresistible answers in Acts chapter 2. Answers of the word of God being fulfilled, answers of doors of evangelism opening, doors of or uh, disciples being raised and the field changing, God is going to give us such answers if we join together in prayer, even in a time of hardship like this one. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, and that's what even the Lord says, where two or three gather in my name, I am there with them. It's not about the number, but gathering in the name of the Lord. Even a few, even two or three, it's very important. There are situations where 
it will even be difficult for two people to gather. If the situation was three, it's difficult to gather because of the, the pandemic in the world or other situations. But even that kind of time, even in a time like that one, God requires you and me to revive our spiritual state. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. And we have evidence of people who found themselves in an alone kind of a situation. But that is not discouraged them. Remember when Abraham was alone. Whenever he went, he built an altar to the Lord and called unto the name of the Lord. Isaac the same. Jacob, when he was faced with a crisis, I was in a situation of fear when he had report that his brother was coming with an army to attack him. That time, Jacob was Jacob remained together in Jacob's favor and he prayed sincerely until an angel appeared. And he grabbed all of that angel and said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And he wrestled in prayer until he was blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. So even when you are alone, it's an opportunity that you can utilize effectively and revive your spiritual state. Same for Joseph, when he was in slavery, again in prison, that did not hinder him. He had the mystery to revive his individual spiritual state, and he was victorious. Praise the Lord. He was so much victorious spiritually that so much that non believers looked at him and said, The Lord is with this young man. Whatever he does, prosper. An unbelieving king looked at him and said, where can we find a young man like this? One in whom is the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Even you and me, when alone, whatever you are, revive your spiritual state. Set a time of reviving your spiritual state every morning and every evening. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. We have read the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse 1 to verse 3. It says, when Jeremiah was confined in the courtyard of his house, one of the Lord came to him a second time and said, The Lord who formed this, the Lord who established it, the Lord is his name. He said, Call unto me and I'll answer you. I'll show you great and unsightful things you do not know. Hallelujah. Amen. Jeremiah was in a hard situation. But the Lord said, The Lord who formed this, the Lord who has established it, the Lord is his name. What does it mean? The Lord is in control of everything. Even the global pandemic in the world, the Lord has allowed. In this kind of situation, what do we need to do? Call unto the Lord and He's going to answer us. And He's going to show us great and unsearchable things we do not know. Hallelujah. This time, the devil is also utilizing and he wants to destroy the next generation. When the people are in quarantine, people are, have a lot of time in their hands. Because they're not going to work places or that. The devil is a scheme to destroy them. To destroy especially the next generation through world music, world movies, and catch of darkness. At a time like this, you're a young person. God wants you to revive your spiritual strength. Even you, grown up person, elderly person, God wants you to revive your spiritual strength. Why? Because if your spiritual state is revived, all other areas in your life will be revived. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. This is what the Lord, uh, this is what uh, John told Gaius. That I pray that you prosper in all things. And that you may have good health, even as your soul prosper. What does that mean? Our soul has to prosper first. We have to revive our spiritual state first. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Elisha knowing this the importance of this, he followed Elijah to the end until he inherited double portion of the feeling of quality, of the anointing that was in Elijah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He was not distracted by Jericho, Bethel, all these things, worldly prosperity, things that religious people are running after with grief. His desire was to inherit double portion of feeling of the anointing that was in Elijah. Hallelujah. Yes. May that be your consuming passion. And let us follow to the end. Let us make a plan. Let us secure time each and every day, in the morning and in the evening, to revive our spiritual strength. Hallelujah. 
When we revive our spiritual stack, we'll be able to fight spiritual battle. Because we are in spiritual battle. But when our spiritual eyes are dim, when our, our, our spiritual ears are blocked, we'll be insensible spiritual matter. And you know what we follow? Physical battles. Physical confrontation. That is the scheme of the devil. Let us not be deceived. Hallelujah. Let us make a plan and revive our spiritual state each and every day. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's how we are going to be a blessing. You know the blessing that God spoke to Abraham? He says, I bless you. I make your name great. And you will be a blessing. My prayer for you is that you will be a blessing whatever you are. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. The way Abraham was a blessing to me. Everyone who met him. The way Joseph was a blessing in Egypt, in Potiphar's house, and even in the palace, in the old nation of Egypt, may we be a blessing, whatever we have. Hallelujah. Amen. God is alive. He worked with these workers, with these disciples in, the, in both the whole New Testament. He's working in this end time. May He work upon your life, O oh God. May He work upon your life. And may your life never be the same. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. My dear everlasting Father, I want to thank you. I want to thank you because you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, you have a desire to revive our spiritual strength. That will be victorious in our spiritual battles. And that will not be deceived. And fall to the deception of the devil and such physical confrontation. Instead of fighting spiritual battle, Lord, be with us, O oh God. Grant us memorable victory, O oh God. Grant us irresistible blessings, O oh God. And may all darkness in every field that we are in crumble completely in the mighty name of Jesus. No matter what happens, may words of disbelief never come from our mouth, but only faith. We know, Lord, without faith, it's impossible to please you. Thank you, everlasting. Father, and in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen.